So in my previous video, I talked about metabolic flexibility and carbs, protein, and fat, and how when you are in really great shape, you're able to shift gears from carbs, protein, and fat, depending on how everything feels, or how in shape you are, basically how clean your diet is, or how good it is. Uh, I just used the word clean, clean diet, what's that mean? Anyways, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about one specific macronutrient, and that is protein. So this is sort of what happens when you eat too much protein in your diet. Your body starts to turn protein into sugar. It manufactures glucose. Uh, typically, what also happens is you end up losing a lot of weight. These are one of the things, the major behaviors that occur because protein is very satiating. It keeps you very full. When you try to eat 200 grams or basically a gram per pound of body weight or more, maybe 1.5, what ends up happening is you uh, get kind of sick. You feel sick. It's, there's this strong... Um, kind of inner built-in system of your body to not eat, to overeat protein because it's basic toxic to the body when you overeat it. This is the reason why you get full when you eat too much protein. This is why high protein diets typically help you lose weight. Now there is a lot of genetic variants and different people and how they respond. Some people it's easier for them to eat more protein, others it's more difficult. Uh, very common what I've noticed anecdotally working with uh, female clients is that a lot of them don't want to eat a lot of protein. I don't know if this is because they don't have as much muscle as men. I think that's actually a big factor of it, but they don't have a desire for meat. And when you are craving food, typically you're not looking for protein. Now, sometimes you do, some people do, but we generally don't. And there's a reason for that. And I'm not going to give you a scientific reason. I'll just give you anecdotal observation, training people for 15 years, my experience based on some of the stuff I read and kind of connecting the dots and putting them together. And that is, it's, a, it's not a good fuel. Your body doesn't want to use it as fuel. It will if it has to, but it doesn't like to. It's inefficient. Uh, this is why it's very difficult to gain body fat, typically on, on the high, to eating too much protein. Because it, it, the thing about protein, which, what, this is what makes the human body amazing, is that if all you had was protein, you would survive. Uh, which as long as you have water, of course, because protein has a tendency to dehydrate your body. It requires a lot more water to break down protein. And when that happens, what's going to end up happening is you'll lose weight. You'll also be more satiated. You'll end up eating more, less calories. Um, but but the, probably the worst thing I would have to say, it causes, it can cause a lot of lethar lethargy. It makes you feel very low in energy if you have like a 50% protein diet, for example. And one of the reasons is not necessarily because of the protein. You know, remember, everything is connected. It's not just because of protein. But when you have that much protein, 50% of calories, you don't get enough stuff from fat and carbs, which are the, typically the main fuel, so, fuel sources of the body. Remember, carbs because of your brain, because your brain primarily functions on sugar. And whereas you have fat, where it's sort of like your unleaded, uh, not your unleaded fuel, but sort of your, your long-burning energy. So, you know, if you don't have any food, you're going to burn fat typically. Or if you're doing moderate, act like I'm standing sitting here, I'll use protein as energy. I mean, uh, fat as energy, excuse me. I'll use fat as energy and then I'll spare glucose if I'm not eating to my brain so that way my, I have strong cognitive abilities. So that's one of the things you want to consider when we talk about protein, uh, high protein diets, is that's the reason why you want to try your best to, when you're trying to lose weight, to have a high protein intake. Typically, um, I'll probably say 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of lean body mass. So if you're 200 pounds and you're 20% body fat, that means you're going to have about 160 grams of protein. And that, I think that comes out to about, uh, I want to say about 20 ounces of meat. I don't, I don't have my calculator right here in front of me, but that's about what it's going to be. Uh, if you have a protein shake, you're going to find that for most people, especially if you're not training hard, uh, you're not going to be able to meet that requirement consistently. It's difficult. If you're training hard, it's easy because you're expending energy, you're breaking down protein, so you want to re rebuild it. What else can I say about protein? Oh yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So when you have too much protein in your diet, you're going to have problems, energy problems, because your body has to synthesize protein, turn it into glucose to get you to function. And it's very expensive metabolically to do that. Uh, your body wants to use carbohydrates or fat as fuel. Uh, and the reason why it gives you problems is inefficient to transfer protein to energy, but also there's a lot of hormone functions that comes from fat. Remember, fat is also a transporter of other vitamins. And if you're not getting enough, uh, if you're not getting enough fat, you're not going to get enough minerals, even if you take a multivitamin, because I think A, K, E, and D, I think those are fat-soluble vitamins that allow you to basically stay healthy and stay fit or get you the nutrients you need that are fat-soluble. And then carbohydrates, you actually don't need a ton of carbohydrates to function. Uh, uh, if you have too low, like under 100 grams for most people, you're going to have some problems. If you're sedentary, 
it doesn't matter. If you exercise and train hard, you're going to have problems because your body likes to use it as unleaded fuel. If you kind of want to get more breakdown of sort of how I explained the interchange of metabolic flexibility on my previous video, you can look that up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And uh, leave a comment below if you got a question or a video request. If you want to sign up for my email list and get my email news newsletter, there'll be a link right here for you to click on. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys all on the next video. See you later. Hey, Aldrich, Rowan. <laughs>